Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to another episode of The Money Codes. My name is Joel here to give you today's money code fix. So have you been in a situation where you went to your mailbox, you see a fancy letter that is addressed to you. It's from one of the big banks, one of the big financial institutions. And with very big letters, it says you have been pre-approved. And sometimes it includes a little styrofoam or a cardboard little cutout of a car to make it feel more real. You call the number or you go online, you apply and then you decline. Or you go on to one of the websites, it says pre-qualify here. You put in some of your basic information. Normally it's the last four of your social, um, your address. And then it says you may be qualified for this card. You apply and then you're declined once again. So what are they doing? Are these credit card companies trolling us? Is there some sort of game that is going on in the background that we're not aware of? So in today's episode, we're going to learn what's really the deal with these pre-approval or pre-qualification offers. How are we able to ensure that we're able to get approved for the cards that we want? And how can we bypass the embarrassment of applying to one of our cards and getting declined? So in last week's episode, we talked about what happens when you have multiple credit cards and you close it down, um, how that impacts your credit score. So in the end of that video, I talked about something called customer acquisition and the customer acquisition cost. So to make a long story short, these credit card companies, they spend a lot, a lot, a lot of money on marketing to try to get new clients, new customers to be able to apply and to use their credit cards. So if you were the CEO of a credit card company and there are hundreds of million of US adults that may be able to use your card, how could you know which customers will be a right fit for your card or which ones would probably not pay you back? So in a nutshell, what these credit card companies are able to do is they're able to go to the credit bureaus, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, and they're able to pull out data. They're able to go to Equifax and Experian and say, Experian, I'm thinking about doing a mailer and I need to solicit this new credit card product. Give me the people that have good payment history. Give me the people that live in these certain zip codes. Give me the people that have whatever the variable is, right? These credit card companies, they know their research. Again, remember customer acquisition costs. They are spending a lot of money on trying to acquire you. So they're doing their homework. So they're going to the credit bureaus. They're able to figure out who they want to mail out their pre-approval offers too. But remember, you're not guaranteed to get this card. What these credit card companies are doing is they're narrowing down the type of people that may be more likely to get approved for this card or may be more suited for this card. And then they're sending out these offers to those people, right? But don't take my word for it. I wanna take you to Experian's website and you're going to see in black and white how this game really works. All right, here we are. So as you can see, if we look at the very top of the screen, we are on experian.com forward slash blogs. And this is a very interesting blog that is discussing how these credit card companies and how these lenders, how they figure out who they're going to target, who they're going to send out mail pieces to. And I want to read you just two sentences that kind of piggybacks off of what I said in the beginning of this video. So at the top of the video, I mentioned something about they're looking for certain things that usually matches up with the target audience that they want to send out their mail pieces to, their credit card offers to. And what this whole process is called, it's called invitation to apply campaign. Remember, connect everything that I'm saying. Remember, these credit card companies, they're spending hundreds of dollars just to get one new customer to start using their credit cards. Let me just read this real quick. An invitation to apply campaign, consumers are targeted using relevant selection techniques and sent a communication encouraging them to apply for a specific lending product. In this case, this is gonna be credit cards. There's no obligation for the institution to extend credit. Let me say that one more time. Let me highlight that. There is no obligation for the institution, Chase, Amex, Bank of America, Capital One. There is no obligation for the institution to extend the credit. So just because you got something in the mail does not mean that it's 100%. They're guaranteed to have to give you the approval for that credit card. The consumer completes a credit application and the financial institution reviews the credit of the consumer 
to determine whether they meet the lender's threshold for approval. All right, so I'm not gonna read the whole blog. It's a very good read, but again, I always try to give you a quote from the source that I'm discussing. I don't want you thinking that I'm just spewing my own opinions on things. I like to give you facts. I like to get quotes directly from the horse's mouth. And you've seen those mail pieces that come in the mail. They're not cheap. That's a lot of paper. That's a lot of ink. That's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of uh, postage. It's not cheap to acquire you as a new customer. So they have to be very specific on how they do their marketing. So this is how they do it. Let's say they send you an offer on June 1st based off of some data points that they got from the credit bureaus in April or in March. And a couple of weeks ago, I went ahead and I opened up two new credit cards. This is recent. Or let's say something changed with my job and I'm not making the same amount that I did three months ago. You can see that depending on when they sent you the offer and if you did something literally days or maybe weeks ago that may have changed your credit profile, the day that you do the approval, the day that you do that complete application, if they see anything that's a little bit funky, if they see that, hey, you've added a little bit too much more debt recently, you know, we can't give you this credit card based off of that new information. Or we sent you this offer because we thought your household was making X amount annually, but now that we see that you're making a little bit less, you know, we can't really extend you this offer. Maybe we can get you um, on our lower tier products, or maybe we can get you to, to get a secured product. Until you do a full application, meaning you give the full social security, you do the full application, until that point in time, nothing is really guaranteed. And I'm gonna go over just a couple of tabs just to show you how uh, different credit card issuers do this situation. So I'm on Discover, and you know I'm a big fan of Discover It. And you can see they call this one their pre-approval form. Sometimes you might see this called um, the pre-qualification form. Again, remember I said in the beginning, sometimes it's interchangeable. Different companies may use different terms, but as long as you see pre in it, this prefix pre, just know that it's not 100% guaranteed, but they're all gonna ask you for the same information, essentially. So they're gonna ask you for your name, they're gonna ask you for your, uh, your household income, your birthday, your social, um, and they're always gonna say, and read carefully, they're always gonna say whether or not this is gonna be a soft inquiry or a hard inquiry. If this is a pre-qualification or a pre-approval form, most of the time it's gonna be a soft inquiry, meaning it's not going to negatively impact your credit score, right? Hard inquiries, pull your score down. Soft inquiries, doesn't really do anything to your credit score. All right, so you can see here, once you put in that information, uh, you have to check the box, but it says here, this won't impact your credit score. All right, so they're gonna look for some preliminary information. They're gonna see whether or not um, you know, you have any collections or if there was any recent late pays, um, anything, any big red flags that may cause you to not be able to uh, qualify for that product. I highly recommend that if you are looking to apply for a credit card that you use these tools because these tools are very helpful. Another thing that you can do is the internet right now is there's so much information being shared um, with you know our community, places that you can find online where people are sharing their data point. So you might find someone that said, hey, I applied for the Discover It card um, and I had a 620 score on my TransUnion and Equifax and a 680 on my Experian and I was able to get approved. Sometimes you're able to see amongst the online communities, there's kind of a gauge or a window where if you fall within a certain range, people are more likely to get approved for certain products. Because again, they're gonna look at more than just your score. Your score really is more of an indicator for the interest rate. If you have too much debt, if you have too many accounts, if you have too much available balance on your unsecured cards, or if you have too little balance on your available cards, all of these things can impact whether or not you get approved for a credit card or the interest rate that you get if you do get the approval all of these things and i highly recommend that you check out my video about the fico reason codes because you're going to be surprised that there are so many different things that fico and these credit card issuers pay attention to when it's time to decide are they going to give you the card right so this is discover uh capital one has one very similar uh see if you're pre-approved for credit card offers with no harm to your credit so again if you're on the market there is no harm to go ahead and try these pre-approval type of request. Um, if you checked out my video on the shopping cart trip, I told you to always put in the last four of your social, not your full. 
Um, that way you're able to get cards without that hard inquiry, but that's a different video. Who does another one? Chase has another one. Uh, see if you pre-qualify. You see how the terms change a little bit. Chase says pre-qualify. Uh, Discover said pre-approval. Capital One said pre-approval. But they're really doing the same thing. They're asking you for your name, your address, your state, and the last four of your social. You click find my offers, and then they're gonna be able to see what offers or what credit cards would best suit your credit profile. Amex has one. Again, same thing. They call theirs pre-qualification. Um, City has one as well. There's a is slightly different. Notice here that there's an invitation code. So that means that that invitation code is attached to a specific marketing campaign. Um, so if you got something in the mail from City, you'll be able to go ahead and put in that invitation code with your last name, and then you can apply for that, right? This, this is a great example of the invitation to apply campaign. This is These are all just campaigns, right? This invitation code is attached to a campaign. It gets sent to you maybe because you are um, a city customer with a different product, or maybe your credit profile fits the criteria for what they think may be an ideal customer. Um, that may be a reason why you may get something in the mail from city. And lastly, opt out pre-screen. So if you are somebody that is just, you're not on the market for a credit card, uh, maybe you're, you're just saying no more credit cards. I don't want anything anymore. Maybe you have great credit and you're getting tons and tons of marketing pieces in the mail and it's annoying. I, I get that. It's understandable. What you can do is there's a website that you can go to called uh, www.optoutprescreen.com. Um, this is the official consumer credit reporting industry website to accept and process requests for consumers to opt in or to opt out of firm offers of credit or insurance. All right, so if you're getting too many credit card offers in the mail and you're not looking to apply, you're not looking to add on any more additional uh, revolving unsecured credit cards, you can opt in, or excuse me, you can opt out and they'll usually give you, oh, here we go. So what they're gonna ask you is, uh, do you wanna opt out for five years or do you want to opt out permanently by mail? right it may be in your best interest to do the electronic opt-out for five years and then after five years you're going to be put back on a lot of these promotional lists and then you're going to get more marketing pieces in the mail one last thing if you do get a credit card offer and this is something that you've done your research on and this is a credit card product that really does suit your lifestyle that you really do want it if you do get a a declined letter or they say that you're not able to get approved always use that reconsideration line a lot of times there'll be a number on that mail piece that they send out to you call and see if you can get somebody on the line uh, you'll be surprised you might be able to turn a decline offer into an acceptance just by placing a phone call explaining your situation you may be able to get your uh, your offer turned around so that's all i got for you for today hopefully you got some gems out of this if you did please go ahead like and subscribe and i'm going to check you out in the next video peace